approach the door to my room, and Franz nudges my shoulder expectantly. Looks like Daddy wants this little boy hole. Fine. Fine. Oh my god, Vivian's giving it to him. Strangely enough, the question I want the answer to the most is... Why am I so erect right now? Hi guys, I just want to take a second to thank all my patrons here who have donated to me. No matter how much they've donated to me, it really means a lot to me. And if you guys want, you can check out my Patreon and help support me continue to make yaoi videos. Thanks guys. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Chess of Blades. In the last episode, I think, I think we just got taken to Linnaeus' quarters because bullshit but <laughs> daddy friend is here to save us so let's just hear what he has to say the guard hesitates for a moment then nods and the visitor sidles past him franz why are you here why is he so shocked to see him like he knows him Maybe they do know each other. Chuckling a little at our startled faces, the man dips slightly forward in a mocking bow towards us. My, don't you two know how to make a man feel welcome. Uh, it's a bit cramped in here, isn't it? His eyes roaming across the room, Franz pauses to study Alistair for a moment, who nervously shifts a little under his intense gaze. I don't recall asking you for an interior space evaluation. What is your purpose in contaminating my chambers? While the two of them offer each other challenging glares, I glance out of the corner of my eye at the door. It's open and the guard seems distracted by Franz as a potential threat. What, are we just gonna run away? What? <laughs> won't we be, won't we just like, get in more trouble? <laughs> like, where are we gonna hide? In the castle? <laughs> Were there even more guards? What? What is this? What is this plan? I could try to make a run for it, although I doubt I'd get very far. What a rude way of phrasing things. But to answer your question, I'm here to get my kitten off the hook. Suddenly reaching out towards me, Franz curls an arm around my waist and pulls me nonchalantly up against his side. Uh, and hand me, you blasted! Wait, did you say you were getting me off the hook? And onto my Before hook. I ask how exactly <laughs> you intend to do that, I'm curious as to how you were even aware of this investigation in the first place. Linnaeus raises an eyebrow, suspiciously staring at Franz with an unmasked distaste. Well, I saw the little blonde here being carted off by the guard in the main hall. So I followed them. It was clear enough he had gotten himself into some kind of trouble. You know, I don't really think I like the way he sounds, either. I just, I don't like it. <laughs> as he speaks, Franz squeezes my hip as casually as someone embracing a longtime lover. I'm starting to think I'd almost rather be taken to a cell than put up with this harassment. I see. In that case, are you able to confirm his whereabouts from the period between the end of the banquet and the announcement in the main hall? Franz nods confidently, lips curled in a winning smirk. Of course. You were there too, Glasses. You saw me follow him after he left the table. I was keeping an eye on him when he went to the gardens. You followed me? What is wrong with you, you thick-headed perv- That may be so. But I have little evidence that your words are trustworthy. Your presence in the gardens at that time also implicates you in this matter. Interrupting my complaint sharply, Linnaeus drums his finger on his forearm, returning Franz's smile with a, dev a derisive curl of his lip. Franz, however, doesn't seem to be phased by Linnaeus's retort. If in fact, if anything, his tone only grows more confident and firm. It just so happens that a guard was with me at the time. I specifically requested his presence in case someone tried to jump the kitten outside. But it seems someone else got jumped instead. But my point is, unless you're going to start accusing your own guards of murder conspiracies, you can confirm my statement with him. The boy's innocent. 
His unhurried words come to a finish, and Franz turns his head a little to glance down at me, squeezing a little lower down my hip. Yeah, I was. I actually looked it up, and I saw that apparently Franz is 6'4", what the hell? And even Linnaeus is like 6'2", like, what the hell? That's like, that's, that's crazy. This time, though, I feel too shocked to even protest. That really makes him a daddy. Was Franz actually watching me all this time? Did he really know something was going to happen? He doesn't seem to be lying, and isn't flinching the slightest even beneath Linnaeus' icy, skeptical gaze. I can't believe it. He must have been telling the truth when we met outside, when we met out on the balcony last night. Some serious things are in motion now, and I've been caught up in them. But how did he know? <laughs> Very well, then. For a moment, Linnaeus gives me a long look, one that seems less accusing and more like some kind of warning. Is he trying to tell me something? Should I not trust no. Daddy Franz? If you could refrain from wasting my time any further, please leave my chambers so that I can return to my investigation. He turns his back on us to face Alistair once more, to which the boy stares at him wide-eyed. Come on, kitten. Let's give Glasses and his poor victim over there some privacy. Grabbing my hand, Franz pulls me past the somewhat dumbfounded guard and out into the hall, closing the door behind us. The Shh, not yet. With a surprisingly serious frown, Franz leads me down the hall in the direction of our adjacent rooms. A feeling of relief washes over me at being taken out of that situation, although there's so many new questions piling up on my plate that I don't know where to start. It's difficult to resist the urge to start asking Franz about what just happened, but his furtive demeanor makes me feel like I should hold my tongue for the moment. We approach the door to my room, and Franz nudges my shoulder expectantly. Looks like Daddy wants this little boy hole. Fine, fine. Oh my god, Vivian's giving it to him. <laughs> Muttering under my breath, I fish out my key and unlock the door. Why can't we go in his room? He's certainly going to get the wrong idea from this. I don't want my sheets covered in our cum. Come on. <laughs> I don't want Silas seeing that. Once we're inside, Franz closes the door behind us, flicking the lock before slowly turning back to face me. He exhales a soft sigh, shaking his head and rubbing a hand at the back of his neck. I didn't think they'd strike so soon. At least I was in the right place at the right time. I'll say. I can't believe you thought to bring a guard with you outside. I'm sure he didn't, but Linnaeus is such a bad inquisitor he didn't even check. <laughs> At my surprised comment, Franz's eyes narrow in a smug, mischievous expression, and he tilts his head to one side. Oh, that? That was a bluff, actually. I only watched you from the window. I have no alibi, but I doubted that glasses would take the time to press further. I like how Linnaeus is just like... <laughs> He just he just accepted it. He just... He didn't even ask... He didn't even ask which guard. <laughs> I just... <laughs> really... <sighs> It is, it is no wonder that, like, Rivian has to be the one to solve this case. <laughs> because, like, the Inquisitor is an idiot. <laughs> I give him a stunned look. He was so completely confident, even while spouting out utter lies to Linnaeus. I don't think I'll ever be able to trust a word out of his mouth again. Although, that aside, I suppose I owe him my gratitude for extracting me so effortlessly. Swallowing my pride for a moment, I let out an awkward cough and briefly avert my gaze. Well, regardless, you have my thanks. Even if it was a bluff, it certainly saved me back there. But I think I deserve some kind of explanation for whatever the hell happened tonight. It seems like you're the only one who knows anything about it. A roguish grin creeps over Franz's face at my words. 
Without immediately replying, he strolls over to the chair by the fireplace, lowering himself down into it and languidly stretching out with his legs spread wide. I wouldn't say you've done anything to deserve an explanation, but I'll give you one, just because I have a soft spot for you. Come over here. He motions for me to approach the chair, so I fold my arms over my chest and stroll up beside it. That's completely unfair, you know. How am I supposed to defend myself if I... Uh... Oh my god. Was, 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 that, was that penetration? <laughs> wow, look at them. <laughs> He's just totally sitting right in... Right in daddy's lap, lucky little boy. Oh god. <laughs> oh my god, I need to stop. Like a serpent lashing out at a prey. Oh my god, is he talking about Franz's dick on his ass? Franz quickly reaches out and grabs my waist, pulling me down onto his lap and his hard serpent. I feel a strong sense of deja vu as he tightly coils one arm around me, keeping me caged in this ridiculously humiliating position. You really need to quit with this habit of yours, or one day I'll pull out a knife and stick your grabby hands with it. Is that so? I don't think anyone's afraid of a kitten's claws, but I'd love to see you try. I think a lot of people are afraid of kitten's claws. <laughs> I'm afraid of my cat. I grit my teeth together and squirm out of principle for a few moments, but it's clear that I'm not going anywhere this time, so I give up and relax in his possessive grip instead. I swear, one of these days when he's not looking, I'll just murder anyway, him. Anyway, you said you wanted some explanation for what's going on, right? Well, here's something for you. The man who was killed? He was one of the ambassadors. What? One of Oops. <laughs> well, he said, what, one of the ambassadors? When I repeat his statement in disbelief, Franz leans in to rest his chin on my shoulder, glancing at me from the side with amusement. Are you piecing it together yet? Someone's trying to start a war, kitten. What better way to do it than to murder a visiting ambassador? And as to why they want a war, well... The dead ambassador's country lost to half its land five years ago to none other than your own kingdom. Let's not forget who was in charge of the armies at that time either. He murmurs these words against my cheek, almost as if he's asking me a riddle, pausing to watch my reaction. Strangely enough, the question I want the answer to the most is, why am I so erect right now? How does Franz know so much? That's what I meant. For that matter, who even is he? But those questions, as important as they are, surely aren't the key pieces on the board that's been set up. Do you know who's behind this? With so many guests here, it'll be hard to pick them out. And they'll strike again before we get a chance to do anything. Oh, they will, kitten. And I know that you're going to be their next target. His response doesn't shock me as much as it did before, but I still feel the blood draining from my face at how confidently he purrs out those ominous words. You're telling me that it's some crazy nationalist who wants to kill me because of my father's actions during the war? He suddenly lets out a low laugh at that, his soft exhalations tickling the side of my neck and making my skin break out in goosebumps. Never have I missed my prized personal space so dearly. Oh, that's entirely possible. But I think the main reason is something a lot simpler. You were out in the gardens right before the murder, weren't you? That means you might have seen the culprit. But I didn't. I only met up with Arden, and Arden's about as likely to murder someone as an eggplant. That's not what we saw last route. <laughs> he seemed so ready to murder somebody. Ah, but the murderer doesn't know that, do they? For all they know, you're keeping quiet for your own safety, or planning some kind of blackmail. Those would be standard games and court affairs, after all. A growing sense of helplessness comes over me as Franz speaks. I want to say he's just making up things to scare me, but... I remember now. 
Back in the gardens, I heard whispering, something that sent chills down my spine. Let them hear, and back inside, that's what they said. And if they were the ones involved with the murder, I'm sure they saw me or heard my voice when Arden surprised me. In that case, they'd probably think I saw them too. Shit. Damn it all to hell. Well, what do you suggest I do? Go and throw myself over the balcony to save everyone some time? As romantic a death as that would be, I think I have a better solution. He flicks his thumb in the direction of my bed, loosening his arm around my waist at the same time. You can go to sleep, and I'll stay here to keep watch. You'd better hurry up before I start feeling the need to extract payment from you. I have already... It already feels like you've been extracting payment from me. From me. I've been... I've been rubbing against that dick in your pants. Hang on a moment. You're telling me you're going to keep me safe until we find the assassin? Wouldn't it be a better choice to just arrange a carriage home? Franz quirks an eyebrow at me, the corners of his mouth teasing, teasingly curling upward. What do you think that would achieve? It's the easiest thing in the world to find out where a noble family lives. And I'm sure your home isn't more tightly guarded than the castle. It's better to solve the problem than to run from it. So your best bet is to suss out the culprit here, get them behind bars, and live happily ever after. With my help, of course. I hesitate, reluctantly acknowledging the rationality in his words. In my moment of pause, Franz reaches around my back, suddenly grabbing my rear with a firm squeeze. And before you ask what I get out of it, besides being able to make you blush and squirm, let me just say I consider this repayment of a debt. That's all you need to know for now. Trying to keep myself from getting too flustered, I give Franz the most vitriolic gear I can muster and push myself back onto my feet, backing away from him. I swear if you so much as breathe in my general direction during the night. Don't worry yourself, kitten. I'd much rather you throw yourself into my arms than have to coerce you into them. And yet, <laughs> all the encounters we've had has you coercing me into them. <laughs> Just now, in, on the balcony, for instance. But I like a rough daddy. He waves a hand dismissively, offering me a suggestive knowing wink, and I turn away with a sigh. Can I really fall asleep with him here? Wouldn't it be a better idea to stay up? Go to sleep? Try to stay awake. Um, okay. We can... We're supposed to... Go to sleep. Oh, we just supposed to. We're just supposed to accept it. Oh God. <laughs> we're just supposed to accept that he's gonna have his way with us in our sleep. This is bad. This is. This is very bad. <laughs> as insufferable as Franz is, I have to admit, I feel at least a little bit safer with another person in the room. As in, <laughs> even if that person happens to be a total lecher. Rather than taking my clothes completely off, I decide it's much more prudent a much more prudent decision to sleep in my underwear, so I keep them on as I slide under the covers, not taking my suspicious gaze off Franz. Why'd you have to get into your underwear? Why'd you have to get into your underwear, Rivian? What tell me tell me <laughs> Tell me um why you're in your underwear, because I think um <laughs> I don't think he needed to be. I think I think he wants something. However, he seems to be lost in thought, prodding with the poker at the fireplace while staring distantly into its crackling flames. If only I could figure out what's going on inside his head, and what his ultimate goal in doing all of this is. Curling under the sheets, I drift off into an uneasy doze. Occasionally, noises from within the room make me jerk a little, but eventually my consciousness wanes to a deep darkness. Mm. I roll over hazily under the covers. Are those birds I hear outside? Ugh. Reluctantly, I pull my head out from the sheets, like a bear emerging from hibernation. 
gentle sunlight streams in through the window, suggesting that morning's finally arrived. Franz? After rubbing my eyes, I glance around the room curiously. No one's here. It wasn't just a dream, right? Then my gaze falls upon a piece of paper lying at the foot of the bed. I reach out to pick it up, squinting at the casually scrawled words. Don't go anywhere, kitten. Oh, really? You can go gag on a pile of cocks, you complete bastard. I crumple up the note and toss it towards the wall. He really thinks I'm just going to wait around for him during the day? Well, he's wrong. It's broad daylight out, and I can handle myself well enough. I don't need him to be my babysitter. Grumbling irritatedly under my breath, I slip out of bed and set about grooming and redressing myself, trying to process the events of the previous day in the meanwhile. So one of the ambassadors was assassinated, huh? How on earth are they going to keep that a secret from the guests? And what about the other ambassadors? I wonder if this is Linnaeus' job to deal with. He did give me that strange look last night. Is it possibly caught on to what Franz was doing? This is all too much of a mess for me. Muttering to myself, I leave my room and head out into the hallway. The sound of chattering voices echoes up from the downstairs, making me feel more at ease. I seriously doubt it can be that dangerous during the day. Most assassins wouldn't risk publicly attacking a target, especially not in an isolated castle like this with nowhere to really run. Heading down the corridor, I turn the corner while humming softly, keeping an eye out all the while. <gasps> Is that a woman, a woman, a woman what? A woman lying on the ground? She looks unconscious. What on earth happened to her? I hurry over, quickly kneeling down beside her. She seems to be an older woman, dressed in exquisite finery. And why does she look so strangely familiar? She groans, her eyes struggling open. Now she looks even more familiar. Wait, hold on. She can't be... Eh? Riven? Is that you? And who the hell are you, you old bitch? Sounding just as in disbelief as I am, she pushed herself up to a sitting position, staring at me in shock. Uh, Aunt Valora, I wasn't expecting to see you here. Especially not, you know, on the ground. Your mother didn't mention a word about you coming to the celebration. I can't believe it. I let out a sigh, a slightly nervous laugh. That's not really a surprise, considering Mother and Valor aren't exactly on the best of terms, even though they're sisters. More importantly, why are you on the floor? Did something happen? I help Valor up to her feet, and she dusts herself off with a disgruntled huff, turning her sharp gaze onto me. Truth be told, I'm not completely sure. One moment I was on my feet, the next I was here on the ground. I think someone snuck up on me when I was leaving my room. You're saying someone attacked you? When she nods irritatedly in agreement, I feel beads of cold sweat break out on the back of my neck. So much for my theory of I'm completely safe in broad daylight. I don't appear to be missing anything, so I'm quite baffled as to what their motive was. Regardless, I was on my way to the Inquisitor's Chambers to be briefed on something that apparently happened last night. My vacation has been ruined already, it seems. Ah, oh, that's right. You're the King's main advisor on foreign affairs, aren't you? Yes, but if it weren't for the prestige and pay, you'd sooner catch me cleaning chamber pots than in this job. Tensions between us and our neighbors are at all-time highs and things are only getting worse. I tense slightly at her words. If she doesn't know about the ambassador's death yet, but let's just say I don't want to be around when she finds out. 
Although, why wasn't she immediately informed last night? It seems like something the King's foreign advisor would need to know as soon as possible. Was it just negligence? Or did they want to get further in their investigation first? Deciding to spill the beans a little, I clear my throat with an awkward smile. Well, regarding last night's incident, it was a murder, actually. Yours truly happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, and I almost got detained as a suspect. Valora's eyes widen, her lips parting as she inhales a gasp. A murder? Oh, well, that's just delightful, isn't it? How did you get caught up in it, sticking your nose in places it shouldn't be? Oh, Valora, just as much as a bitch as you've always been. She squints a little at me suspiciously, and I can't help but shrink back a bit. Is she really thinking I'm involved with this? No, no, I was just in the gardens around the same time the murder took place nearby, you see. I didn't hear so much as a scream. It's almost disappointing, really. <laughs> You'd better watch yourself more carefully, you know. Being your father's son won't excuse you from everything. As she thinks I use... As she thinks I use father's name to wiggle out of being held as a suspect, does she? Did I read that wrong? <laughs> well, she always seemed to like them a lot more than she likes mother. Maybe a little too much, actually. I think she holds him in a higher esteem than she does the king himself. Speaking of your father, do give him my regards when you get back home, won't you? It's a shame how little we talk after he retired. You want my, my, my real daddy's dick, don't you? You want to break up my parents' happy marriage? Uh, yes. I'll try to remember to let him know. I'm sure he misses you too. <laughs> Actually, father absolutely despises Valora. I feel like he's called her a slimy old witch more than a few times. Emphasis on the slimy. Probably better not to tell her about that, though. Of course, of course. Well, I'll be on my way to get the details of this whole murderous affair then, and let the Inquisitor know some attacker of defenseless women is running around on the loose. Do take care, Rivian. I wiggle my fingers as she passes by, watching her elegant figure until it disappears around the corner. Oh. <sighs> I swear, each time I talk to Valora, she looks at me like I'm some sort of unruly child. Maybe I remind her of mother too much, or maybe she just gives everyone who isn't father that look. Deciding it's in my best interest not to dilly-dally in the same spot Valora was knocked out, I quickly head to the main hall. I make it to the stairs without any further incident, which is far more of a relief than it really ought to be. On the balcony, a few servants are drifting around with trays of light delicacies and pastries, and I take a few here and there to cobble together a casual breakfast. While I eat, my thoughts drift idly back to Franz. I wonder what he left my room to do, to go to, find clues maybe. Or perhaps he's got another lord or lady he's trying to woo. Well. Well, if that's the case, then I'm just never letting him into my into my little lord's hole. Into my little lord hole. <laughs> lord hole. Oh, God. Sur surely I can't be the only person he treats like that. I bet he plays around all the time and just drops the object of his affections as soon as he gets bored. <sighs> I shake my head moodily as I lean against the balcony. Well, it's not any of my business what he does. I just wish he'd stop pretending like I'm special, or like he knows me. It's damn distracting. Oh my god, Rivian's just already falling for him. <laughs> oh my god, you're pathetic. As I silently griped to myself while observing the well-dressed ladies and gentlemen stroll around below, a small tug comes at my sleeve. Mm -hmm. A little startled, I quickly glance over to my left. Little bitch? Did she not get kidnapped in this route? <laughs> I thought she did. I thought she still did. Well, that's quite a surprising turn of events. Well, well then, um, I think I'll end the episode here, right before a little bitch squeaks at us. But, um, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Bye!